Hi, I'm Laura Coyle, and in this video, I'll show you how I made the rays around this light bulb using a very flexible and easy to edit method in Adobe Illustrator. And we'll do this using two Illustrator features. One, Objects on Path, which is new in Illustrator 2025, and two, the Symbols feature, which is an old favorite. I'll start us off with a walkthrough of Objects on Path so you know how to make one and how to edit it, and then we'll move on to the light bulb example. If you already know your way around Objects on Path, you can skip ahead. All right, let's dive in. We'll start with the basics. So each one of these icons here is a group, and I'm going to select all of them, and then go over to the toolbar and click on the Objects on Path tool. And now when I hover over this path here, I can click on it to space these objects out along the path. And you can see there are a lot of controls here that we're gonna look at. Now, if you clicked on your path and it didn't work, just make sure that it's either an open or closed path and that it's not part of a group. Each one of these objects has this little select and move icon. And when you click on it, you can actually see the bounding box surrounding that artwork. You can grab the widget to move it but as you can see, it's gonna snap back because the spacing must be equal between all the objects. But you can use this widget to change the order like that. You can also change the attachment point. So as you can see, it's now in the center of that bounding shape for all of these objects. But if we look in the top control bar, we can see we have objects on path selected. And here in this nine block icon, we can change that attachment point. So I'm gonna click here on the bottom center, and now you can see how that changes for all of the objects at once. Another place that you can look for that is if we go into the properties panel, we'll see that same icon where we can choose the pivot point. And when I click on something like maybe this lower right point or this lower left point, and I'm wondering how is this aligned here, just click again, to see the bounding shape here. And so you can see that it's actually literally just that little corner that's attached to the path. I'll go ahead and change this back to the bottom center. Now we'll look at the other widgets here. So this widget changes the spacing. So if I go to the left, it starts to squish up the spacing. Going to the right, it spaces them out. And if I hold the Option or Alt key, I can move this from the center. So kind of like when you draw shapes in Illustrator, the Option or Alt key transforms it from the center. This diamond widget here on the first object moves all of them. So we can just move them along the path like this. We can also use this widget here to rotate all of the objects at once along the path here. And you can see that angle here in the contextual taskbar, as well as over here in the properties panel and up on the control bar. I'll go ahead and change this back to zero. And now we'll talk about editing inside of the object. So first of all, we can use our white arrow as we normally would to select the path, just how you would select something inside of a group like this. I'll change its stroke color to none so that we don't see it now, but I can always select it again. I can select little parts of the icons here, but if I want to, for example, change the size, then I need to double click, and this takes me into isolation mode. And here I'm able to now select on the individual groups within. Notice when we're in isolation mode, there's a breadcrumb trail here and it's letting us know that we are inside of this objects on path object. So I can go ahead and scale some of these individually here. But if I were to double click again, for example, on this palm tree, now I'm one level down in the artwork. So it's always helpful to know, you know what level you're at. I'm gonna go ahead and click here to go back into Objects on Path, and I'll go ahead and scale these as well. Then I'll just double click again to get out of isolation mode, and I'm back to having the widgets and the controls that I can work with here. Once you're done working with this object, you can expand it. And if we go up to the object menu, and we look at our usual expand commands. We have expand, which is grayed out here, and expand appearance. 
I recommend instead going all the way down here to the Objects on Path menu and then use this expand. That way it gets expanded in one step. Now, when I click on the artboard, I can see that what I have here is a group. We look up in the upper left corner and now I can ungroup it and work with the art as usual. Now that we know how the basics work, here is an example of how I'm using objects on a path to create the rays for this light bulb. And one of the things that's great about this is that if I decide I need more rays, I can double click to go into isolation mode and I can see that I'm inside of the objects on path object. Then I can grab one of these rays, hold down on my option or alt key and just drag out a copy like that. You can see how it just puts it in there. So I'm gonna do one more like that and then I'll exit isolation mode by double clicking and then I can come back here and work with the spacing again. So in this case, I want to make sure that I have one ray centered at the top and I already have some guides here. So I'll just turn those on and I can move these around until I get that top one centered there. And then I can hold down on the option or alt key and change the spacing from the center, maybe to make it more like that. And let's turn off the guide so you can see this better. So this works great. And if I wanted to change the color of these rays, that's not hard at all. I can come here and select the object, and then I'm going to double click to go into isolation mode. And while I'm here, click on one of these, and then I'll just go up to select same and fill color. That selects all of them. And then I can come over here and just grab a pink color and double click on the artboard to exit isolation mode. So it's easy to make a change like this to the color. However, if I wanted to maybe make these rounded, I would come in here and double click, select one, maybe zoom in. And then with the widgets, I can round this one, but then I'm gonna have to go through and round every other one. So what I was thinking that could make this more efficient is to instead use a symbol. So let's take a look at how symbols can work inside of objects on the path. So I'm going to start over and I do have the same path there. It's just invisible. And then I have my one ray. And before I attach it to the path, I'll come over to the symbols panel and drag this here to create a symbol. And I'm just gonna leave all the defaults as they are and click okay. And there's my symbol. And we can see this is a symbol with the little plus sign in the middle of it. So I'll select this and then let's go over to the objects on path tool. And then I'm gonna hover over that path and click on it to attach the symbol. Next, just like I did before, I'm changing the pivot point. And then I can go into isolation mode by double clicking. And here I am with that selected. We can see I'm inside of objects on path. Now, if I double click too much, I'm gonna get inside of this symbol. So I wanna make sure that I'm you know, in the right location, the right level here in the breadcrumb trail. Now I can hold down on the option or alt key and drag out a copy like I did before. And I can also use this place symbol instance button. It does the same thing. So let's just go ahead and place more of them along this path while I'm inside of isolation mode. So I'm gonna go seven, eight, nine, let's do a whole bunch. All right, so now I have nine symbols here inside, and then I'm going to exit isolation mode by double clicking on the artboard, and let's work with the spacing. So like we did before, um, I can change the spacing from the center by holding Option or Alt. I can come over to the diamond and move them all at once, and let's turn on the guide so that I can make sure that I have this one you know, running straight up and down. So I'm moving like that until I get it right there. Okay, so I like the way this looks. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off those guides. And so now let's look at what's great about having a symbol here. So what we can do is anything we do to change this symbol is gonna update all instances of the symbol that are here inside of this objects on path. So first thing I wanna do is 
just make a backup copy of the symbol in case I need to go back to the square or the rectangular yellow ray. So I'm going to drag this down to the plus sign to create a backup copy. But I can come in here and edit this symbol by double clicking on it. And this puts me into symbol editing mode. So again, it's like isolation mode, but we can read the breadcrumb trail to know where we are. And then I can come here and let's change the color to pink. Oops, looks like I changed the stroke. Let's come back and change the fill to pink. And here's where I can actually zoom in, select this and use the widgets to round it off like that. And now when I exit symbol editing mode, which I can do, you know, by clicking here, I can also hit the escape key. Let's do that. And back out here, you can see I've updated all of the rays here. So it just makes it super easy to make changes. And then if I decide, okay, well, I want to go back to what I had before. Let me go ahead and again, I'm going to make a backup copy of this symbol here just dragging it to the plus sign and I've got the backup copy, but I know that this is the one that's actually here inside objects on a path, um, but I can overwrite symbols. And I just had a recent video about this. It's just a very easy technique to use when you're working in the symbols panel. So all I need to do is option or alt drag one symbol over the other and that replaces it. So let's hold down on the option or alt key, drag this here and we've, we've replaced it. Or I can go back to the pink one and replace it like that. Or I can hold option alt and uh, let's re replace it with this symbol right here and on and on and on. So this objects on a path paired with symbols can actually be really, really useful. All right. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this tip. If you want to keep learning with me, join my illustrator learning community inside. You'll find courses, live sessions, and a friendly group of artists and designers working on all kinds of creative projects in Adobe Illustrator. You can also get my free Illustrator tips and news by joining my email list at lauracoilcreative.com. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you for watching.